Okay. Well, thank you guys for joining us. Um, so we're going to open a word of prayer. All right. Father, we thank you for um, today. Father God, thank you for this afternoon. Lord, we just, uh, Father, we just say um, you lead us, God. You, you guide us. And Father, you be with us, Father. And Father, I thank you for the revelation you've given me uh, to share with your people today, Father. And Lord, I just pray that it be a word of encouragement for them, um, that it build them up strong, God, for the journey ahead, Father. Thank you so much for your grace and for your love and uh, for your precious Holy Spirit, Father God. And God, we thank you that uh, this, this word would just um, uh, penetrate deep in the hearts of those who need to hear it today, Father. Uh, Father, I just sense uh, a presence of discouragement uh, amongst your people, Father. And God, uh, I, I pray that this, this, this word will find them where they are and lift them up, Father. So God, I thank you, Lord, uh, that everything in our lives matter, God. You, 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 you count everything, God. You know everything, God. You're omnipresent, Father. And Lord, I just thank you right now that today um, there will be breakthrough for your people, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All right, guys. Um, thank you all for joining in. So, What's the name of this song? Um, well, you know, nothing else. Nothing else. Uh, nothing else. Um, that's Cody, uh, Cody Carnes. Nothing else by Cody Carnes. Okay, so... Um, we, we're on Facebook and we're on um, Zoom. So um, I kind of want to just do a quick uh, teaching on, and, I, and I, I'm feeling like the Lord wants me to go into the prophetic today also. So we'll just, just pray as we go along, okay? Um, so I want to talk about enduring hardship. I was in my time of prayer last night asking and seeking the Lord for a word for us. And, um, you know, I just felt some heaviness and discouragement from some people, um, so for some people out there. And so the Lord just wanted me to give us a word of encouragement today, um, you know, to help us kind of uh, get through it and enduring hardship. Um, and so you guys on Zoom, I've already posted some of the links, um, you know, because right now some people are really, you know, they, they're really feeling the, 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 the bite of this, you know, what we're dealing with this pandemic. Some people are really facing more financial crisis than we, than we know. Uh, you know, there are people committing suicide. There are people, um, just really going through really, really hard times, guys, even though we're out, you know, praying for people and, you know, uh, feeding people and doing those things, but there are still people in the midst of us, all the aid that we're giving out and doing are still find themselves dealing with, you know, suicidal like thoughts and, and great depression and sadness because they're having a really hard time coping with all this uncertainty. And so uh, my, my goal today from the Lord is to encourage those people who are really having, who are really struggling in their faith right now, who are really struggling with this time and just with everything going on, even though they understand the, uh, the, the measure that we're going to with the quarantine and everything like that. Some people really just having a hard time dealing with claustrophobia and dealing with the restrictions and dealing with just really find themselves having a really, really challenging time dealing with all of this. And, and so, um, so the word I have today is for people who are really just feeling the heaviness and this and the uncertainty. Um, you know, um, you know, even even when you start out walking as a Christian, you find yourself going through really hard things. And the hard thing is really trying to do a new thing you never learned to do and unlearn everything you've learned uh, before you believed in Christ that you still have the memory understand. Right. And that's what makes part of what we do as Christians a, a really hard struggle, because you're trying to do a lot of things in your own strength and change a lot of things in your own strength before you come into learning how to do things by the spirit of God. And so I kind of want to talk about today um, in the book of uh, 2 Timothy, verse uh, 4, 1 through 8, the Apostle Paul is giving instructions to Timothy, his disciple, on how to endure hardship, how to go about after he leaves and he's done ministering to him, how to go about doing this ministry, do, doing, the way, doing things the way that he has encouraged him to do it. OK, so we're going to read uh, 2 Timothy, uh, chapter 4, verses 1 through 8. This is in the New American Standard Bible, then NASB, OK? I solemnly charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with great patience and instruction, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but wanting to have their ears tickled, they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own desires, and will turn away their ears from the truth, and will turn aside to myths. But you be sober in all things, endure hardships, do the work of an evangelist fully, fulfill your ministry, for I'm already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the course, I have kept the faith. In the future there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, 
which the Lord, the righteous judge, will reward me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Praise God. Okay. So, um, so going back to verse three, he said, for there, there's a time that will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. And a lot of times now, nowadays, you know, we are listening and following people who are kind of ministering to where we were stuck, but not getting a solution of how to come out of it. Does that make sense? And, and we're, we're telling, we've been told how to cope and that God's going to magically someday come through and help us and break us through and do all those different things. And, and because when you, when you, when you first try to give your all to God and then you start the disappointment or which you prayed and believed for something, it doesn't happen. And, and you feel like, where were you God? And you know, somebody you, you believe to be healed of cancer dies, or you believe God for this job and you kept praying for it and had people agree with you and it didn't come through or, you know, you find yourself, uh, you know, having setbacks in life and you really believe and pray God with all your heart and it didn't show up. Uh, then you start to have this, this bitterness that rises up in God and, and you start to look for things that cater to where you're functioning, your emotions, instead of being steadfast in your faith. Does that make sense? And so we have become fair weather in our faith guys. And a lot of times we have to understand that we have, we have to learn to endure hardship guys. We have to learn as soldiers of God, to endure hardship. Everything is not always supposed to be catered to our comfort and to what we feel and what we think, even if it's things that, that God has given us, because there's a test, there's a growing, there's a revelation of God that he wants you to come into anointing in him. Um, and, and so I, I, I just want to encourage you guys in that, but he's giving um, um, Timothy's instruction. And he says, he says, for the time will come in verse three, that they will not endure sound doctrine, but wanting to have their ears tickled. Uh, they will accumulate uh, for themselves teachers according with their own desires. I mean, they will follow people who are like them, who they want to listen to, who, 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 who think with the same reasoning and logic that they think with, you know, that justifies where they are, but it keeps them stuck. Does that make sense? And it says, and it will turn away their ears from the truth and will turn aside to myths, but you be sober in all things, meaning don't allow your circumstance to confuse who God is and your relationship with God and what God wants to do. And so many times we allow our circumstances to redefine who God really is. You see, instead of understanding that, wow, whoa, wait a minute, I have been, I have, my definition of God have been wrong. I've been defining God based on what's been happening to me instead of what he says in his word. Does that make sense? But he said, you be sober nothing, meaning you be level-headed in everything. Okay. And he says, endure hardship, endure hardship, meaning there'll be challenges. There'll be things that'll be hard, that'll be tough, that don't make sense, that you shouldn't be going through that are unfair. But he said, do the work of the management. Stay committed to what you committed to God doing before all the hardship and challenges happen. Stay faithful to what God has told you. Don't confuse your circumstances with God telling you that you're doing the wrong thing, that you shouldn't believe in him, that you shouldn't share the gospel, that you shouldn't keep encouraging people when you don't have things. We have to get to a place that we're really living by faith, guys. That's what faith really is. It's a substance hope for and everything's not seen. And that's what he's encouraging the man. And he says, for I am already being poured out as a drink offering, meaning I'm giving my life as a sacrifice for this gospel. And he says, in the time of my departure come, meaning I'm about to die. But I, I don't, I'm not confusing my current state of death and going on. I understand it's my time. I've done my work. You see? And he said, I fought the good fight. I have finished my course. Do you see? I have kept the faith. And in the future, there is laid up for me this crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, would award me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. And so he's talking about, you know, he's looking forward to heaven being his reward for what he's doing. He's not looking for this earth to tell him he's doing right or the other apostles to tell him he's doing right or anybody else to tell him he's doing the right thing. He knows within his relationship with God that he's doing the right thing, even though he's about to be killed for it. Do you see? And so we got to understand that, guys. We got to stop misunderstanding and misconfusing and confusing our current circumstances with God's love for us. The Bible clearly tells us that all things work together for our good to them who are called and those who love God. He works it for our good. Meaning there's, beautiful, there's beauty in everything you go through in life, guys. If you choose to let God show you the beauty in everything, there's, a, there's beauty for everything that you go through. The word of God tells us there's beauty for ashes. Does that make sense? So I, I, the Bible tells us, would you consider it, consider it pure joy? But my brother says, when you go through diverse things, do you see? So when you consider your situation, whether it's self-inflicted or it is something brought upon you and find the joy of God and, and, and God in the situation. Um, um, but, you know, my encouragement to you guys is not to give up, but endure hardship. 
you know, um, you know, I have faced, you know, in my lifetime back in 2008 was probably the hardest year of my life. And that year I lost so many people in my family. I lost my brother. I lost my uncle. I lost a cousin. I lost an aunt. I lost a grandfather. I lost so many people. And it felt like the closer I got to, I got to God, somebody would die. So the pattern I was looking at and thinking like, okay, God, so if I get closer to you, somebody I love dies. And that what was happening. My mentor, my pastor, she passed away um, within a few years of that time. And I just saw this pattern. I thought to myself, like, well, you know what? Maybe I'm, I shouldn't be doing this. Maybe I should stop because I don't want to lose anybody else if this is what it costs, you know? And for a few years, I stopped serving God wholeheartedly. I kind of was on the shelf and went back to just being just me, um, just a shell of myself because the death was just too much on me. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know. I didn't have anybody to really talk to at that time uh, who understood what I went through. And um, I wasn't questioning who God was or his existence. I was just questioning what was I doing. And, and, and I felt like it was my fault that everyone around me was dying, you know, and I really thought like that. And so over time, I kind of just got into my career as a personal trainer. And I, and I and anytime something came up for the Lord, when people sat before me at my desk at, when I was a GM, they would share their stories with me and say, you know, oh, well, you know, I, I feel like God is doing something, but I'm not sure. And I wouldn't I really wouldn't go there and say anything because. I didn't want to pull that person into somewhere where they're going to die. Like, this is the way I thought, you know, um, and I had to allow God to heal my heart and to, uh, to, to, to bring me to a greater revelation. And when I started reading the book of Job, it really helped me um, understand and get through that time because God was trying to show me just like Job, there were things that I didn't understand that I was limiting my understanding of God based on my experience. And then there were things that God wanted to show me at a higher place that I allowed him to show me. They brought me revelation and brought me peace and got me back into doing what I'm doing today. And understanding that there was a purpose behind me going on those things to help encourage other people who are going through things that they just shouldn't go through or that they don't understand. You know, how would I be able to affect and minister to people uh, who are broken heart if I never experienced it myself at great levels? Does that make sense? Paul says, I become all things to all people. And so God has brought me through so many different experiences that way I can effectively minister to his people when they go through these things beyond the norm. Does that make sense? That was his purpose. But at the time I went through, I didn't understand that the, that, that was the purpose of it. Do you see? So your pain and, and things that you're going through, it's for a purpose. It's, it's to help people. It's to, it's to show people who are in the thick of it, that there is a brighter side. That is a greater side. Does that make sense? And uh, in Galatians chapter six, uh, verse nine, the Lord tells us, uh, uh, about endurance and what, and what happens when we continue to endure. And let us not grow weary while doing good for in due season, we shall reap if we do not lose heart. And in most case, no, that's, that's, the, um, that's scripture. Right there. Oh. Uh, so, um, so make sure when you're enduring that you're enduring with hope, meaning you have to have hope guys. You can't just keep going through life and, and going through your struggles and not have hope. A lot of people, just endure things and go through things and, and but without hope and you have to have hope guys you have to you have to believe that better days will be ahead of you you have to envision and believe that god has better for you than where you are currently you have to believe that that's what got me in a situation i started to believe the word of god even though the reality was there were so many people dying around me who i loved and cared about do you see and i dare to believe god in the midst of my reality and you have that's where you have to start guys you got to start believing god despite your current reality that's the first initial step you have to do in coming out of what you're stuck in or what you're oppressed by, okay? Because in most cases, we're complaining. And so when we're comfortable, um, we get entitled. Does that make sense? So most of, our, most of our things that we're dealing with, for the most cases, are self-inflicted with regard to what we're going through, it's self-inflicted. So we have to create discomfort for ourselves to get us out of, uh, of, of where we are, where we're stuck to, what you really desire. You know, Jesus' disciples were disciples before they were apostles. They had to learn to discipline themselves, come out of their comfort. Jesus says, leave, you know, your house and leave your families, leave these different things for my name's sake. He called them out of their comfort. He called Matthew right in the middle of his job while he was collecting money for taxes. He called Peter right off his job when he was fishing and trying to provide for his family because we know Peter was married. Do you see God calls you out of your comfort? And, and so in the next step out of, out of seeing hope and looking forward to hope is allowing God to bring you out of your comfort. You have to allow God to bring you out your comfort, guys, or you won't change. You'll keep complaining. You'll keep murmuring. Do you know the Bible tells us not to complain, not to grumble? That's a scripture. 
Do you see? But you have to allow him to bring you out of your comfort. Okay, for true change to happen. And that's what I did. Even though I, I had justified reasons for not serving God, I had to still allow him to bring me out of my, my comfort. The book of Job challenged me to come out of my comfort. You see? And, and, and that's where faith really is. So we're going to go into um, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2 through 11, okay? Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power has given us to all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Okay, so so I'm going to put a pause right there, but but, but listen to that. Um, grace and peace be multiplied unto you in the knowledge of God and our Jesus. See, we lack knowledge. We need more revelation of who God is beyond our circumstances that we, we need, okay? And his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. God has given us all things that pertain to life and God through his spirit, but we have to get to know his Holy Spirit so that way he can show us how to overcome these things that we're facing, okay? And through the knowledge of him who... Uh, who called us by glory and virtue by which we have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises. There are promises of God that we have not yet discovered. Does that make sense? And, and, and so all the scriptures are listed on the, on the top of the group, on the group chat. Um, it was second Peter one, uh, two through 11. Okay. All right. First whatever. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith, virtue to virtue, knowledge to knowledge self-control to self-control perseverance to perseverance godliness to godliness brotherly kindness okay so see you faith alone faith by itself is not enough you have to add some things to your faith there are the other components than just believing and trusting god for the impossible you have to add some things around it to strengthen it does that make sense just like if you're trying to work out and build your body up Working out is just one aspect of building your body up. You have to you you have to add rest to it. You got to drink. You have to drink water. You have to, um, you know, yeah. You have to eat healthier. Um, you have to get cardiovascular exercise. There, there, you have to get more information. You have to have accountability. There are other things besides just lifting weights you have to do to have a healthier body. Does that make sense? You have to add things to it. So you have to. Faith alone is not enough, guys. You have to add things to it. And so you have to add to it virtue. You have to, uh, and, and to virtue knowledge and to knowledge self-control and self-control perseverance and, pers and, and to perseverance godliness and to godliness brotherly kindness, meaning showing love. And then, um, and to brotherly kindness uh, uh, love. So there are components that we have to add to our faith to make it strong, to build it up so where we can truly endure. Does that make sense? And, and um, okay, so go ahead. For if these things are yours and abound, you will neither you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short sighted even to blindness, and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Look at that. Look at that. It says, For if if these things are in you and abide and, and abound, meaning you continue to working on these things, you continue cultivating these things in God, despite what's going on. Listen to that. Uh, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Meaning you will have revelation about everything that's going on in your life and what's happening. You have revelation. You have understanding. The clarity will come about why you're really going through what you're going through. Do you see? Don't you want that? <laughs> and it says for if the, and, and it says for um, he who lacks these things is, is short-sighted. Meaning you can't fully see and perceive what God is doing if you don't cultivate this kind of a lifestyle with God. You will always be behind. You will always misunderstand things. You will always not fully see things. You will always have the same reaction. Every time something in your life doesn't happen, you don't like, you will always react the same. No matter how old or young you are, you will always do what you've always done. But, but claiming you believe in God. Do you see? Because you're short-sighted, even to blindness, and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his own sin. Meaning you will go back to what you've done before. You will go back to what you did before you believed in Jesus because you've not understood, because you've not added things to your faith. You have not been disciplined in the things of God. Do you see? And if you find yourself in these cycles of things that you're constantly doing that you don't want to do, you have to ask yourself, have I really been in doing the things of God? Have I really grown in things of God? Am I really doing those things that God has called me to do before I start complaining and blaming everyone else, including God, and not holding myself accountable? 
Does that make sense? Okay. Therefore, brother, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Wow, that's powerful. It says, therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. Look at that. God's plan for us is, is, is to never to stumble. Okay. Um, so there are a lot of people who are praying, you know, right now against this, you know, people from different religions and different backgrounds and, and people who are really devout. Uh, about their, about their prayer. Some people, the Muslims are doing Ramadan right now. The Jews are uh, celebrating Passover. Everyone is praying, uh, have their own time and their own things of prayer. But as, but as Christians, we're not consistent in our prayers. We pray, we pray, we pray, and if something change or, or, or go away, we just give up. We just stop. You know, we go, okay, well, God want to do something, he'll do it, and I've already prayed, so that's it. No, guys. We got to be more devout in what we believe. We can't just give up because something not changing the first one, 10, 15 times we pray. We got to stop giving up, guys. You know, Jesus would go away and pray all night to the Father. He would pull away from the crowds. He would leave the disciples. He would go pray all night, guys. Right now is a ministry, power, and authority. We're on a 40-day fast, believing and praying, God, for breakthrough of not only what's going on with this pandemic, but for our nation and a belief in Jesus. You know, and, and, and 40 is the number of testing. So we're enduring this. We're going through. We're, we're riding this thing out for the long haul. Do you see what I'm saying? And, and, and so we have to do that, guys. So you have to make your mind up. Is God really real? Is what you believe in Jesus really real? And stop being fickled about it because things don't line up and look the way you want them to look. Do you see? There were, there were people being killed all around the disciples, but yet they kept preaching the gospel. They stayed steadfast. They were beaten and they kept preaching. Do you see? And so that's what we have, guys. And, and, and so we have to understand that. Um, 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 but you know, do you remember when, 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 um, the story, when, when Peter asked Jesus, I mean, cause I, when Peter, asked, when Jesus asked Peter, who the people say that I am, ask the disciples, you know, a lot of times we don't go forward because we're looking around at everyone else comparing ourselves. We're so conscious, so worried about what people are saying on social media, what people are saying in our lives. Guys, you got to get beyond what people think and say about you in the fear of man. You got to stop that guys. It has no place when you believe in God. You already have God's opinion about you. I don't care what people say about me. There are people who talk about me all the time, who say I'm a mystic, who say I'm crazy, who say I'm a good guy, who say I'm um, just a black man. I mean, whatever they say. They say all kinds of things about me. They talk about my, me and my marriage or my children or whatever. I don't care, guys. My reputation is in God. And that's the place you need to get to. We're, we're too concerned what people think and have to say about this or what we think they're thinking about us. What, but what about God's opinion about you? What about your own belief in your good nature about, wh what about what you believe about your own self? When does that take a play a role above what people have to think and say about you guys? We got to get over people pleasing and all of this, caring about what people say about us. Guys, it has no place when you walk with God. I wouldn't be doing what I do today if I still cared about what people said and thought about me. I wouldn't. You know, and I, and I want to encourage you that get away from what people are saying about you and what you think people are thinking about you. Have an understanding of who, who God is in your life and, and who you are. You're too concerned. You, you stand up all night and all day making comments and trying to prove yourself to people. My, listen, whatever people think about me, my life is not going to change. No comment on Facebook is going to change my life. No thought that anybody thinks about me is going to change my life. I have a beautiful life. I thank God for my life, but it's not because I, 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 I've, I've been the perfect person to everybody who thinks I should be and do something. Do you see it's because I follow God? I trust God. I don't care. I don't, the only opinion that matters is what God thinks about me. And I made that my priority. Do you understand? And so if, you are, if you're a Christian, someone who believes in God, let God's word for you be enough for you guys. And if people don't want to hear it, don't try to sit there and convince. Don't waste your time with that. You're wasting your time. Stop wasting your time with those small things. You see? So, um, and, 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 and let's, let's look at how Jesus handled people talking about him. Let's, let's, let's follow his example, okay? So this is Matthew um, chapter 16, verses 13 to 17. This is the way Jesus handled it, okay? When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, 
who do men say that I, the son of man, am? Listen to that. Jesus says, okay, what is, what's, the, what's the gossip on me? What people are saying? Now, he wasn't saying this to try to figure out, okay, well, who said what? And let's go over there and talk to them so they won't have the wrong impression of me. Huh? So they said, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? You see that? Okay. Now, I hear what all these other people are saying and talking about, but we have a relationship. We roll together every day. So now that you heard all this what people on the outside are saying about our relationship, what do you say about it, Peter? What do you think? Mm -hmm. Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Mm -hmm. Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona. For flesh and blood have not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Look at that. So he said, blessed are you, Peter, because man, people have not told you this, but the Spirit of God. See, living by, I live by what the Spirit of God tells me. I live by what the word of God tells me. That's what you're supposed to do when you believe in Jesus. You can't be living by whatever people, other people say. You have to live by what the spirit says. And then he got more revelation. He said, look, now, whatever you buy, I will give you the keys. I will give you revelation. I will give you things beyond this world to make you a champion. He said, and I will give you the keys of the king, kingdom of heaven. Look at that. The key, what the keys mean? Access. Access. And, and, and so, which is, which is an amazing thing. And so, and so, and so he said, and whatever you bind on earth would be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth would be loosed in heaven. Look at that revelation. See, and see, when you don't spend time with God, when you don't listen to God, when you don't hear God's word, you miss so much that he has given to you. He didn't just save you just to save you. There was so much more that Jesus has given us than just a ticket into heaven. He's given you the keys to how to live in his life in victory. Jesus said, I've overcome the world. So that, therefore, he has made us in all things more than conquerors. But if you don't listen to him above what people say and think about you, you will never see the victory. You will always struggle. You always find yourself going home crying yourself to sleep or being angry trying to fight somebody. Or, you know, you will always find yourself constantly, even though, say, doing ungodly stuff with people because you have not understood what you've inherited from God. There has to be a difference with us, guys. There has to be something different about us. You know, the Bible says we're fearfully and wonderfully made. There needs to be an example of, of Christ in your life. The Bible said they will know you by, they will know that we're of God by their fruit, by the way we love one another. They will know we're from God. And so I, I want to remind you guys of that. Uh, and because the Lord tells us that, uh, that God gives grace to the humble, but he resists the proud. So even though you're a child of God, you'll find God resisting you because of your pride. Pride is when you're worried about what everybody else is thinking and saying about you. That's pride. Do you see? But you need God's grace. So humble yourself and say, Lord, I don't care what they say. I don't, I don't care what's going on. I trust and believe what you have to say. Does that make sense? And, and the Lord would look you out of the situation. He would teach you how to overcome those things. He would show you um, how and, and to do what to do. And, um, you know, if you do only like what's easy, life will always be hard for you. But if you do those things that are challenging for you, that are not easy for everyone else, life will be a lot easier for you. The things in my life have gotten easier, not because I don't, I don't, I don't face hardships, it's because I've learned to do the hard things in life. So when the challenges of life come, they're a lot easier for me to deal with because I, I made choices when things were good, the conditions were fair to make the hard decisions and to trust God. When it wasn't popular, when it wasn't a good, when it didn't feel right, when it didn't look right, when I was uncertain, when I was unsure, when no one else was doing these things, do you see? We have to have godly discipline, guys, in our lives. We we the part of the fruit of the spirit is self control. We're not practicing self control. We're just letting our emotions and feelings and whatever people say just get the best of us, and we just live any kind of way. But say we believe in Jesus, we're hypocrites. Do you see? But God, God's promises are true. And in 2 Corinthians, um, in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, it tells us. But all the promises of God in him are yes, and in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. And, and so, and look at that. For, for all the promises of God in, in him are yes and amen. Are yes and amen. For all the promises in him. 
For all the promises in him are yes and amen. So when you seek him, when you understand him, you understand that your promises you already possess, you are, you are already hold of it. See, salvation was something that was already done for us before we came to the revelation of believing in Jesus. Do you see it was already done 2,000 years ago? Your salvation was already set aside 2,000 years ago, and then you, but it's new to you when you hear the message of the gospel. But it had already been done. But it was something you had to come into. And likewise, that's how everything else works with God, guys. That's how everything else works with God. Do you see? And so I, I um, so I, I want to, I want to, I want to pray for you. Um, I want to pray for you guys. Um, the scripture was First Corinthians, uh, Second Corinthians, um, uh, chapter one, verse twenty, and it's, it should be at the top of the group, the uh, the group chat, the scriptures. But, um, but I want to pray for you guys, okay? I want to pray for you guys that that those of you guys who will find yourself being weak in your faith and struggling in your faith right now, questioning God and all those different things because circumstances are uncomfortable. I want to pray for you, okay? Because in my time of prayer, I felt the heaviness and the uncertainty of my belief and my faith in Jesus, okay? Um, and that's what I want to pray. So, Father, I, I thank you right now, Lord. Lord. I just pray for your people, Father. And God, I lift them up to you right now, Father. Father, I just pray that, um, that they would go deeper with you, Father, that they would spend more time in prayer with you, Father, that they would, they would know your voice and know who you are, Father, and, and not question um, their relationship with you, Lord Jesus, and what you said and what you've spoken, God. Father, I pray they would be steadfast in their faith. Father, I pray that they would turn their ears to truth and not just the people who think and act and talk the way they do, Father. Father, I pray they would get away from people pleasing and struggling uh, with the thoughts and judgments of other people right now, Father God. Father, I pray that we would no longer spend time, God, addressing those who have misread us, misjudged us, or who have uh, rejected us, Father God, but that we would be God chasers, God, and not people pleasers. And so, Father, I just pray for your people right now, Father, coming in spirit of heaviness and depression in Jesus' name. And Father, I just pray that your people will, will come to a place of repentance in their relationship with you, Father God. And Father, make your word prime and number one, Father. And Lord, I think that your word will be enough for them, Father. So Father, we come against doubt. We come against anxiety. We come against fear of all kinds, Father. And Lord, I just pray right now, Father God, that your people will be single-minded, Father, and they will trust you, Lord Jesus. And they will take a strong stance, irregardless of their situation, God, irregardless of their place they're being, irregardless of what they think they lack or don't have, Father, or what's happened to them, Father. They will take a stand for you, Lord, and they will grow beyond the place of just only trusting you with what they can see, believing you when things go the way they expect, Father. But, Lord, they would have a, a, a supernatural encounter with you, God, a supernatural trust in you, Father, God, a supernatural belief in you that transcends everything of this world that you've given us, God. And so, Father, I come against confusion. Father, God, I come against doubt of all kinds. And, Lord, I just thank you right now, God, that we no longer operate in semantics, Father, God, with you, majoring in the minors, God, with you, Father, but that we would trust you, Father, God, and not stumble in the small things, God, but, but look to you, Father, from which our help comes from, Lord Jesus. And so, God, I thank you for each and every person on, um, on this feed, God, and I thank you for bringing them, God, and God, I pray uh, that this word just brings healing and comfort and encouragement to them, Father, God, that it's up to them to walk out their salvation, Father God, and to trust you that you are truly the author and finisher of their faith, God. That I thank you, God, for this revelation, for this encouragement, Father God, on this day. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. Um, so, so thank you guys for, uh, for, for, um, for, for joining us today. Okay. So I didn't, I didn't know the scripture went up. Okay. So I'm going to repost, uh, copy and paste the scripture up top. Okay. So that way you have it. So, Huh? No, I, I, um, okay. Should be on here. Okay. So we'll, we'll get those scriptures posted guys. So, and if not, I put it in the teaching. So, so sorry about that. Um, let's see. Yeah, I don't know why it's not. Okay. Okay. There are the scriptures guys. So, okay. All right guys. So, so thank y'all for joining us. We love you guys and, uh, we'll see y'all later. Okay.